theme in particular, but I had the the great job thing up there. You know, is there is there something else? Or if um, I wanted to talk about death, but it needed to span over two slides, so just picking something else that also includes death, so that it's included in both of them. Yeah. Yeah. I, I liked uh, the Yeah, I think, I mean, it does exclude the learners who like to read words. Um, I think the slides I would potentially change would be um, the developmental stages of children for the subconcepts of death, just because you have to go through it really quickly. But alternatively, I could have just given two slides so that I could have talked about it a lot slower so that people can actually um, take that in. Um, but yeah, putting words on there is something that you can include. I just wouldn't use more than a single sentence um, or maybe a bullet point with three points on it. We, it's not going to be there for long. Yeah. Asana, over here. Yeah. yeah. Well, it, I was just laughing at that because while I was working on some exhibits this morning, uh, the school kids were in, and one of the one of the guys, one of the teachers, was like, "Oh, I, just things keep moving around in here." And her, one of her students said, "They can't move around. Everything's dead here." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Sure it's all flat. Death is everywhere. Yeah. And like some kids are just going to be like totally all right with it and laughing it off, and then as an adult, you're like. <laughs> you talk about that? Kill them? You know, questions come up. Yeah. 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 I'll just say that I saw this the last time you presented, and I found it super helpful because it comes up in programming all the time. Yeah. Working at heritage yeah. sites, and you get asked about people while they're still alive, and yeah, using those tips definitely. The best thing you can say is just be clear. You know, are they still alive? No. You don't have to elaborate. You don't have to add more unless they ask. But just, you know, where's Eric Anderson now? He's dead. Moving on along with the conversation. If they have follow-up questions, they'll ask it, and you can answer them um, clearly. But yeah, thumbs up. I have a question. <coughs> yeah. um, I'm curious if, like, in your research, or if you've seen this anywhere, if kids react more strongly to like the death of humans versus mm -hmm. the death of living things, like like in a natural history museum, like other living things, like animals. I think the death of humans brings too, brings it too close to their own mortality, as it does for ourselves as adults. So um, some of the people I talked to in my research said that using, like talking about animals was a lot easier for kids to have that conversation when they were looking at taxidermy or talking about the passing of uh, an animal at their site or um, finding Nemo. It's a lot easier to talk about an animal just because it's, it's in a child's mind still very separate from their own mortality. Okay, so going back to the presentation style, sure. what do you see as why you would choose a night over a more traditional presentation? If I have 25 minutes, I love that I'm only spending five minutes talking about something so that we can have 20 minutes for discussion. And if the audience is really quiet, it means that I can have 20 minutes where I'm pulling information from them. I really love having conversations, um, and a presentation is very much not a conversation. You're up there, you're, you're giving information, and then there might be five minutes worth of questions. So I like that it puts you into a really tight tight timeline to get your information out there and then discuss it and unpack it. Yeah. No more questions? Excellent. Thank you. Next we have so we Nicole, who's going to do a <laughs> workshop presentation with us, um, and I don't think there's anything else, but <laughs> talking about workshops. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're a workshop about workshops. There we go. <laughs> we're getting really mad at here. Yeah, I know. It's so our, our sort of aim with the with having the workshop option at the conference is that sometimes, <laughs> you know, we go to these things and we spend a lot of time sitting and listening, which is great. But sometimes you want those tools that you can actually take back with you. And so the workshop is an opportunity to give people some time to really work on a particular skill. And mm -hmm. we'll turn that over to you to Thanks. show us what you can show. Awesome. So I'm going to have to be over here, Lisa, just because I've got okay. clicky slides and sort of stuff. So um, this workshop is a workshop about planning your presentations, kind of thinking about workshops. So <laughs> um, first of all,
all, I just wanted to talk a little bit about what a workshop is. So we had a sampler of a panel where there's multiple speakers talking about a particular topic. We had an individual presentation talking about how to plan panel presentations. Uh, we've had our Ignite talk, which is our five minute quick talk, and then into a workshop. So workshops really are all about skill building, exploration, or information gathering. It, the biggest difference I find is that the, participa the participants are expected to be active. Um, so this could involve things like brainstorming, group work, worksheets, discussions, hands-on activities. So really, your audience is part of the whole experience in a little bit of a different way. So uh, I first want to throw this out to you. What makes a good presentation or workshop? Chat with your neighbor, share a memorable one, and then we'll share as a group. So the good and uh, quick conversation makes me feel like you have all been to a good presentation before. <laughs> Excellent. Um, does someone want to share one particularly memorable presentation or workshop? I once saw this presentation about death. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. What made it memorable? <laughs> Uh, what made it memorable for you? Uh, it was funny, it was quick to the point, and uh, it was really, um, it was relevant. It was like telling you guys, and, and because uh, they gave us tips and tricks, but mm -hmm. not just like, we worked on this project once upon a time, and mm -hmm. kinds of stories. This is, you'll need those. Excellent. So I want you to keep those really good presentations in your mind while we talk about this. So I really wanted to focus on building some skills around planning presentations and workshops. So my question to everyone out there, who has presented at a conference before? A mix. Excellent. Who has been to a conference before? Perfect. Okay. So there are definitely some ways to make a conference presentation memorable uh, and engaging. Has anyone been to a bad conference presentation? Yes. <laughs> um, I will share because I won't make anyone else put anybody on the spot or anything. Uh, but I feel like for me, the presentations that I find I get the least out of are ones that the entire time is filled up with somebody talking. It feels like it's not well prepared or maybe it was written for another type of organization or a different conference and was recycled. Um, maybe it wasn't as clear, but it really just didn't give space for you to absorb material or feel like you really engage with it. So we're going to try to break that for the rest of the day today. So a couple of simple things when you're doing a presentation. Uh, so some design tricks. Number one, keep it simple. Don't do this. <laughs> uh, it's not useful to have a whole paragraph up there because you're reading it and not listening to me. Uh, the slide should reinforce what you're saying. So just like Lorenda's Ignite matched up with what she was talking about, that is important. Uh, color always makes the items pop. Which word do you notice on the screen? <laughs> color. <laughs> uh, use easy to read consistent fonts, which is <laughs> impossible to read one. And minimum 14 points. So the last point is in 14. Uh, one trick that I have is if you are sitting at your desk and you're building your PowerPoint presentation, put it up on the screen and slide back a couple of meters. If you can still read it, your audience can probably read it up on a screen. Um, use animations wisely. <laughs> uh, so this is a wise animation. We are crossing out the information that is irrelevant. Uh, don't use star wipes. It's not necessary. Uh, unless it is something very purposeful and you're using it purposefully, then that's totally fine. Uh, for images, again, use images that reflect your content or your theme. 
give people enough time to look at whatever is up there, especially images. A lot of people have the tendency to flip through photos really super quick. Uh, curb that instinct. Uh, use your own images first. So at the museum, we have a plethora of images. I hope that your institutions have lots of cool stuff for you to use too. Uh, but if you don't have images, look for Creative Commons or public domain images as well. Uh, keep in mind you might be asked to share your slide deck with your conference. So when you're building it, if you are using somebody else's work, put a little URL in your notes so that you know who to credit if you do have to share it elsewhere. Charts and data. If you know me, you know I love data. <laughs> um, so first of all, don't show data unless they are important. Uh, data are confusing. They can be a point of misunderstanding. So if you are, if it's actually relevant, make sure you're showing it, but otherwise don't show it. Continue to use your font themes. Don't just copy paste the black and white paper chart into your PowerPoint. Make a new one that matches. Use color to your advantage and remove extra information. Uh, this uh, image or little video is one of my favorites to show a terrible chart. It's gonna keep going. Take out all the information that is not relevant. It's a surprising amount of information that comes on a chart that you can remove and still have all of the understanding there. We're still taking stuff out. <laughs> still taking it out. Uh, so really, there is a lot of chart junk or ink junk on a chart. We're still taking stuff out. <laughs> uh, so direct labeling is one of my favorite things to do on a chart. Uh, less is really more impactive and is important when we're talking about data. So really uh, helpful to remember when you're showing a chart, but also you can break the rules. So I did not use a lot of images in this presentation on purpose because I know that when you read and you listen, you often understand things in a different way. So I've broken my own rules. Let's move on. <laughs> so um, I have come up with a worksheet to help you plan your perfect and excellent presentations. And it's really just designed to walk you through all of those steps. I feel like a lot of us get, I don't want to say lazy, but maybe lazy, uh, when we plan a presentation and we just are like, open the PowerPoint, like yada, 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 it's done, we're going to do it. Uh, by taking a step back and actually planning in a coherent, logical way, you will really impress yourself. So. I did this tedious process. I did a nerd night talk a few months ago, and I did this process, and it took forever. But the presentation that I gave, I was so happy with. I got applause as I was answering questions. Like, it was a, it was like, oh. <laughs> the work is totally worth it. So I'm going to force you all to do some work today. Uh, so logistics are an essential part of your planning process. So. Things like when do you check in as a presenter and how long should your presentation be? Specifically, what time does it end? Not just, it was 25 minutes. If it ends at 4.25, know that time so that when you see it, you're cued into it. Uh, the way your room is set up, if you're presenting with a panel, who are your co-presenters, any other notes you think you need to know. Uh, discussion time. So with our presentations at the LMME conference, they're either 25 minutes or 50 minutes. It's important you don't plan your whole talk to take up that whole time. Uh, it's your own voice. <laughs> I think it's more interesting to learn from everybody else in the room. There aren't very many opportunities to get to meet so many different people talking about a topic you're interested in. Uh, discussion and Q&A is very important to your audience. I hope that while you were chatting about your favorite presentations, you included some really good discussions. I find that anytime I go to a presentation and I get to talk to somebody else, it makes it much more memorable. You can do whatever you'd like. So <laughs> plan discussions at the end or throughout your presentation. And this last point, I think we forget a lot. Uh, you, as part of a conference, have a duty to be mindful and to be courteous to the people who are coming to your talk, giving them enough time to go to the bathroom, for example. <laughs> Uh, you also owe it to the next presenters. You also owe it to yourself to be able to go to a presentation that you're interested in. So it is important to be mindful of the other folks that you're working with during the day. Materials are also something we take for granted. Has anyone given a talk and did not actually ask if there was a laptop or a projector in the room and just assumed there would be? <laughs> Me! <laughs> 
Uh, so it's important to ask those questions. Even if you think that they're basic, sending an email like, I'm going to bring a PowerPoint on a stick. Is that cool? That kind of asks the same sort of question. Uh, but remember the things you need to prepare versus what you're supplied with versus what you need to bring for yourself. Uh, type is very important. So go read your proposal again <laughs> that you submitted maybe two months ago and you're working on it now. Reread your proposal. Make sure you've figured out what type of presentation you are going to do. If you do need to change that for any reason, contact your uh, contact sooner than later to see if that's a possibility. And the first question I like to think about is if I was attending this presentation type, what would I expect? So if I was attending a panel, I'm going to expect a coherent storyline between a few different presenters. If I go to a, a traditional presentation, I'm going to assume we're going to get more in-depth into a conversation. A workshop, I'm thinking that we're going to get involved all together. And Ignite, I'm going to think of a really, really long discussion period. The audience, 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 audience. <laughs> As educators, I feel like we're comfortable with this. Um, but think about your audience. Uh, what do they know already? How do they learn the best? What do they want to learn? What challenges might come up as you're doing this talk? Uh, and what questions might come up? Try to anticipate the needs of your audience. Another way you can think about it is, what are these people coming in with? And what do I want them to leave with? That's often a nice way to think about it, too. Your objective and message. So writing it out really clearly is very helpful. Uh, Reread the conference theme and what they're all about. So for example, ours is big ideas, museums, and momentum. So that's things like climate change, social justice, all sorts of really big, juicy ideas. And how do you link back to that? If you were going to this conference, why would you want to go to that one particular session that you're hosting? How do you make it relevant? Uh, when somebody tells their colleague about the presentation they went to, what do you want them to tell you about? Do you want them to come back to you and be like, I went to this presentation and like, I'm pretty sure this person was from this place and they were kind of talking about uh, like painting maintenance, but like I don't really remember that much of it. Or do you want them to say, this person was talking about how oil paintings are harder to maintain than acrylic paintings or something a little bit more interesting. So make sure that message is very clear to you. You're going to want to outline painstakingly. <laughs> so your objectives, introduce yourself. I've forgotten to introduce myself many a time, so write that into your opening. Uh, your opening should establish what your audience knows so that you all have a level playing ground to jump off of. Uh, so that is like the bottom of the ladder. We're all on the same page. We're going to go on this journey together. You lay out your supporting information for each of your points. And think about how the points link to each other. So if they're separate feeling, make sure that you have a good transition between them, just like you would do on a tour or anything like that. In your conclusion, it's important to repeat your main message. Make sure you note how it's relevant and important. And any next steps for your audience? Do you want your audience to go home and practice something? Do you want them to talk to somebody? Do you want to point them in the direction of a really good resource? Um, Plan out your Q&A discussion. So come up with some questions. You, if you have a friend coming to your presentation, plant a question with them. <laughs> it's very helpful. <laughs> uh, you can always give the person who's introducing you or monitoring the room a question if you don't know anybody. Or you can throw out a question to the audience. Very helpful. Uh, and storyboarding. Everybody's on board with me until this point. <laughs> I like I literally mean storyboard. Is so, storyboard? pardon? Is yours? Uh, this one's not mine. It was from a blog. I can't remember her name off the top of my head. But I ha did do a storyboard for the Nerd Night talk. I have like big scribbly pages, um, and physically draw out what you want your presentation slides to look at. It seems tedious. It absolutely is tedious. <laughs> Uh, but it's nice because you can do this while you're, you know, sitting in a space that might be a familiar atmosphere to you. You can kind of hang out on your couch. You also don't have to be on the computer for four hours or whatever. You can also cut apart the little squares and reorganize them into more coherent ways. It works if you're not doing a PowerPoint either. So if you're planning on doing a, you know, a casual chat or maybe you're doing a tour, storyboard it. How do you want your audience to look? Do you want them to, like, gasp in amazement at a particular point. <laughs> Do you want to give them advice? <laughs> give them advice. Uh, it's really helpful. It's, it can be really challenging, but especially when you're presenting for a new audience or a new topic, 
this will help you really clarify that in your mind. So, last things to talk about before we do a little bit of brainstorming. Uh, what should you expect at a conference in general? So, register sooner than later because you often will get a discount and that is also very useful. Um, you're going to meet lots of like-minded people. You're going to network with a lot of people, so bring business cards or paper. Uh, bring a water bottle with you, <laughs> um, pens, paper, and depending on the conference, uh, so ours in January, we do a waste-free conference, so bring a plate and some forks if you can uh, in order to save some waste. You are going to feel super tired, <laughs> and you're going to feel like, I've learned so much today, there's no way I can possibly apply everything to my life, and that's okay. That's totally okay. That is the way a conference is meant to be. It's m meant to be engaging and enlightening and inspiring and tiring in that like creative, stressful way. So enjoy it. Embrace the chaos a little bit. The post-conference social hours are a ton of fun. So if you have the energy, definitely go to them. And it is your day. So if you're talking to someone and you're like, this conversation is so much more important than anything else I'm doing today, go with it. Enjoy that time and that space to talk to that person. Uh, I find them really inspiring and really fun, and there's something you get to look forward to. It's something that is kind of the borderline between personal and professional, which is a really fun sort of resource. So before we move on, does anyone have any additions for workshops, any of the presentation styles we chatted about, or anything else you can expect at a conference? Yeah, Lisa. Just to add, um, that, uh, the point about Mm -hmm. So, you know, I come from a science background. I try to push myself to go to you know, an art session or a history session because I find that really helps me to think about things in totally different ways. And you always find the interesting way to connect them. So, don't do your usual stuff. I agree. And I feel like don't do your usual stuff in so many ways. Like, if you're really, if you like the really long sessions, maybe go to one of the tiny ones that's a little bit smaller. Like, mi mix it up a little. Great point. Anything else? Yeah. I think, excuse me. For networking opportunities, I also look at who is presenting and who I may want to have a meeting with and contact them ahead of time and arrange um, arrange a meeting with them. Mm -hmm. It's not always you have that opportunity. Yeah. And just like you were saying before, be brave. If there's someone you know that will be in attendance at a conference, go say hello. Uh, attend their talk. Say, I really enjoyed this. It made me think about X, Y, Z. A lot of people are really happy to talk about it after the fact. So please, please do that. Any other thoughts, additions, questions? Yes. Um, I didn't know, like, when I've been teaching, um, you know, s small, but still the same sort of topic of workshops at my studio, for example, um, what I have learned is that, you know, yes, I'm going to convey, you know, all the same things every time, but every student requires, you know, different in this case I'm teaching how to weld but you know it uh, you just you run into different issues with people's the way they stand you know whether they're really gung ho for it and just keep going no matter what or, or you know just need some correction constantly like it's, it's really interesting so I think I like workshops for that reason mm -hmm. both as, as a receiver and a, and a teacher of them Totally. I totally agree with that. Uh, I think it also kind of reinforces the point of, like, don't reuse your talks a million times. It, every time you give it is a good reason to refresh, to practice, to think, um, and to really frame it towards what you're talking about. Yeah. I think one thing also to keep in mind for your question and answer period is to um, listen and know how to pull out the information of what someone's saying so that you can build that conversation. It's not just someone's shared information and then we stop. Mm -hmm. Ask anyone help, uh, else with any questions, but to actually listen and then say, you know, I hear, like you were saying, blank. Does anyone have the same sort of experience? Or yeah, yeah. Build, yeah. build the dialogue if it's not happening naturally. Yes, yes, I agree, and I have seen a lot of people frame their question and answer period from that into a discussion by simply saying, "That's a great question. Who else would like to add to that?" And just like forcing people to respond to it is really helpful. <laughs> Awesome. So I wanted to leave some space for brainstorming today. So whether you are 
eggs, brains, eggheads, <laughs> you know, um, put some puns in it. Uh, so brainstorming, I think, is really important. I feel like sometimes we don't give ourselves enough time to put our ideas together if we've got a conference coming up. So I've printed out these lovely worksheets so you can all take them home or work on them today. Um, so I was thinking about doing this in a couple ways, but what I think we'll do is make it a really free form. So I'm going to leave the theater open so you can use this space as you want to. I'm going to make some tea upstairs in our cafe, and there's some cookies upstairs as well. So you can come up there and chat with me. How about the chatty group comes upstairs? If you want to be a little bit quieter, you can explore through the museum. Uh, and we are open until 5 today, so you're welcome to stay as long as you want. But Emily, did you have any final notes before we disperse a little bit? Um... First of all, thank you to the BD for hosting this meeting. This was such an informative meeting. I'm so glad that we today are experimenting with Facebook Live. We're, we're trying to record these <laughs> sessions. Um, we might need to try again. Um, <laughs> but hopefully we can upload those, yes, those templates on online. Um, and I don't know about you, but I've been to conferences. I've presented at conferences. I don't know if I've ever personally attended a training where someone went through about how to do a presentation. And that's kind of where the idea for this meeting came about. So thank you to all the, all the speakers mm -hmm. today who, who are volunteering your time. Um, to do this that was that was fantastic mm, great yeah so I guess um, my last note before we do the egg brainstorming um, <laughs> is the next well the next big thing will be the conference in January and then the next LME meeting is February 20th it'll be hosted by the Lynn Canyon suspension bridge so we try to move these meetings around the lower mainland so we all get a chance to visit each other's sites and hopefully you get a chance to visit the, the BB that's it for me. Awesome. Thanks, Emily. Thanks, everybody, for coming today. So uh, if you'd like to hang out and brainstorm with us, I encourage you to. I've got clipboards, uh, some worksheets, and then a whole bunch of different colored uh, and writing objects. So grab a handful of whatever you would like. Uh, I will leave these here. There's also some museum stickers, so help yourself. I'm going to quickly run upstairs and get some tea boiling, but help yourself, and then I'll kind of bounce between some upstairs? places. Uh, in the cafe, so if you go all the way up the big long ramp and then behind the lovely people that you checked in with, there's some tables and chairs over there. Fantastic. Make sure